This video is about the general design requirements of an absorption column, either be it tray or packed column. The first design criteria would be to determine the nature of the solvent and the type of gas to be treated because we need to determine a solvent that is able to dissolve the gas. Number two is the type of column. If the column is large, that means if we are planning to treat gas that is in large amounts, then we would use a plate column if the column diameter is more than one meter. But if it's less than one meter, which also means that the amount of gas that can be treated is small, then we can use the packed column, which is less than one meter in diameter. Number three is to look at the detailed characteristics of the plate or the type and size of packing. For plate, be it either sieve tray, bubble cap tray, or valve tray. For the packed column, the type and size of the packing, such as the rashic rings or the interlock saddles, etc. And the size of the packing to prevent channeling. Number four, we need to determine the adequate solvent flow rate so that flooding will not occur. If it's too high a solvent flow rate, then the flooding phenomena might occur if the amount of gas flow is high. Number five is the packed height or number of plates and plate spacing. But this particular design requirement is not covered in this video or in the previous videos. And number six is uh, the column diameter which we attempt in the last example in the last video. And number seven is how much of a pressure drop are we willing to allow the column to experience. We want to reduce as much as possible pressure drop in a column to prevent flooding and to make sure the flow is able to go through the column, be it solvent or gas, without hindrance. Next, we look at the principles of absorption. To design an absorption column, the diameter and height of the tower must be calculated or designed. As we, as we attempted in the previous example or video, we saw that to calculate the diameter, we need to determine the, the liquid gas ratio first. Here I, I wrote it as L over V, just to maintain consistency. This is also the same as L over G. How about the height? Now the height depends on the final concentration of gas absorbed or how much of the gas needs to be removed before it can go out of the column because the higher the height, the more gas can be absorbed. You also need to look at how fast mass transfer occurs in the column. If the rate of mass transfer is slow, then the height of the column would need to be taller because it needs to accommodate the slower mass transfer rate. But if the mass transfer rate is high, then the height of the column can be lower. Keep in mind that height is proportional to cost because the higher and the bigger the column is, the more expensive it becomes. To determine the height of the column, we need to perform mass balance and energy balance calculation. We also need to determine the mass transfer coefficients or how fast the rates of mass transfer. 